ultimately my goal of treating these hip problems, labral tears, hip impingement, whatever it is, the preservation side is, first of all, enable you to get back to being active and not hurt. Hip impingement is a condition of the hip that was first described 25, 30 years ago by the guy I did my, my training with, Reinhold Gantz. And basically the issue is the hip joint is a fairly constrained joint. It's a ball and socket joint. And there is a hemisphere with a femoral head sitting in the hemisphere of the socket, the pelvis. And when certain bones are not formed correctly, so for example, if the socket is too deep, or where the femoral head forms the femoral neck, if that indentation is not formed correctly, as someone moves, things, bones come into contact or impinge, and there are structures that can become rubbed and pinched and, and damaged. Uh, the cartilage bumper around the socket called the labrum can become bumped and damaged, and that can cause pain. It can start off very uh, small and, and uh, uh, innocuous and, and not be a big problem and then progress over time and activity to become a much bigger problem and more damage to the point where we call it arthritis or cartilage damage. So it's a mechanical hip problem that we now recognize much better than we did 20, 30 years ago and we're just, we've developed ways of treating it. So hip pain comes in many different forms and the way people experience hip pain can be different for everyone. Problems of the hip are generally felt more in the front, the flexion crease of the hip. They can be on the side, they can go down the leg, even to the knee, sometimes past the knee. They can also be felt more in the back or posterior area, the buttock region, And but commonly those back areas are areas of referred pain from the back, typically, the lower back, the lumbar spine. There's overlap and there's nuances to this, but in general, hip problems or the pain from hip problems are felt more in the front and to the side of, of the hip joint. So if you're experiencing this, um, this hip pain, you know, first of all, you should think about the way you're moving and the things that you're doing. So if you started a new exercise regime and you've been overdoing it with the, the deep squats and the leg presses and the, and the hip flexion type, strengthening type exercises, maybe consider those things and, and uh, consider mixing up the way you move and trying to avoid overdoing it with a certain set of exercises or activities taking an occasional anti-inflammatory or Tylenol, as long as you don't have any reasons not to take those things, can be reasonable for occasional pain. And then if that fails, talk to your family doctor or potentially a physical therapist that uh, you can be referred to. Somebody, somebody who has a familiarity with activity-related pain and, and so on. They can potentially discuss with you ways of changing your activities, working in ways of stretching and strengthening the area, you should start with those sorts of things. But if all that fails and you're, you're two, three months into this and you still have the same pain and it reproducibly hurts when you move a certain way, seek to see somebody who has a bit of higher knowledge. So that might be someone like me, for example, if it's a hip problem. I'm a surgeon, so I have, I have certain treatments that are, are applied to things when, they, when all else has failed. But if you're not getting the answers you need from whoever it is, your family doctor or the physical therapist or nobody, then seeing one of us would be the next step after you know symptoms that are just not going away. When I see somebody who's coming in for a presumed hip problem, my first thing is to try and figure out if it is a hip problem. And that can be very difficult sometimes. You know, pain is hard for people to sometimes explain. Pain comes in such different flavors and it evolves and it changes and it depends on the time of day sometimes. And then people who are coming to us are, have been in pain sometimes for a long time, so sometimes they're not well rested or they're just not in a good place because of the pain. So the first thing is just understanding their pain and trying to get a sense for, you know, am I dealing with a hip problem or is this a combination or is this something else other than the hip that's causing these issues? So first of all, it's just listening and then watching, just watching how people move, how they get in and out of a chair or how they, mo how they walk or how they hold themselves. That gives us a better idea of, you know, if this is a hip thing and then ideas about their general health status. It really makes a difference for us to see you know, how in or out of shape somebody is, or people's weight, we, we look at that. And I know it's a difficult issue for many people, weight, but it makes a difference. It makes a difference for how 
we diagnose a problem and certainly makes a big difference in what treatments are appropriate and what risks we may face if we decide to, to apply a treatment. So I examine people then. I do more specific tests for the hip and look at motion, pain points, areas of tenderness. We rely on x-rays. X-rays are the things, x-rays are this amazing thing where we get to look at the structure of the bones. They're two-dimensional, but they allow us to see the structure of the bones of the, of the hip, in my case, um, and let us know if we're dealing with anatomy that isn't quite, or is, you know, everybody's anatomy is on a spectrum and we're looking for outliers. We're looking for things that just aren't correct for that particular person. And then we may look at special tests, like MRIs have been an amazing addition for us and they've gotten better and better. And it, they enable us to see the soft tissues around the hip joint better. So we look at the, the cartilage, the, what's called the, the labrum, this bumper around the socket. We look at the, the ligaments and capsule around the joint. We look at the musculature. And we sometimes see unusual things, you know. So those are the main things that we do. But I think the biggest thing is just listening initially. And that can be hard for both of us. People have a hard time explaining pain and explaining their symptoms. And we're not always the best listeners. We try to be, but uh, yeah, so listening is the, the best thing. So what's been really fun to see with hip impingement and labral tears over the past 20 years since I've been working is our evolution in, in understanding why people develop labral tears and pain from that. And by understanding that better, it's guided us to, to treating these things better. What initially we tried to do was to see in the hip and, and try and take out labral tears. Now what we're doing is we're preserving the labrum. Sometimes we're reconstructing the labrum with tissue from elsewhere. And then the big thing that we're doing that's really helping with people's recover or just outcome from this is we're better identifying the mechanical problem that led to it in the first place. And what we used to have to do was invasive things to treat that or, or make that better. Now arthroscopically, we're much better at shaping the bone, changing the bone shape, and doing it in an arthroscopic way where we're making these tiny incisions, we're doing much less damage to the hip to get this done, and it hurts much less than it used to, and people's outcomes are better. So not only is it the kind of thing where we're reducing pain initially, but we're also setting the hip up to be successful down the road. And, you know, what we ultimately want to, I mean, the two things we want to accomplish here is First of all, make your pain better and make your function better and enable, enable you to, to do your thing, whatever it is, walk, bike, swim. But we don't want you to have to come back in 10 years or whatever to get your hip replaced. That's really the, a huge goal for us. And uh, that's a harder thing for people to know or understand because it's so far off in the future. But ultimately, my goal of treating these hip problems, labral tears, hip impingement, whatever it is, the preservation side is, first of all, enable you to get back to being active and not hurt, but we don't want you to need something else down the road. And um, it's been super fun to see that evolve over, like I said, over the past 20 years.